Why, yes, I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Live from Little Rock, it's Shane Plays Radio, Geek Talk Radio, a journey into the things we love. Thanks so much for listening, whether you're listening live via the uh, radio station and here in Central Little Rock, 96.5 FM, The Answer, or if you're listening on the station's website stream at 96.5 FM, The Answer dot com, or if you're listening by podcast, uh, delayed or on Krypton Radio, Krypton Radio dot com is sci-fi for your wi-fi and we're we always run a week delayed on krypton radio so if you're listening in any of those ways so glad to have you i'm your host shane stacks got another great show for you today uh our call-in number this is interactive talk radio so uh one of the reasons i do it is so people can can tweet me or they can call in and they can participate if they so choose and sometimes people do and sometimes they don't that's fine uh, but it, but it is interactive. So we go to this extra step with the radio so that people could do that if they so choose. So the call in number is 501-823-0965. That's 501-823-0965. And people can call in anytime during the show. That's fine. You can call in about news. You can call in with questions for the guest or whatever. You can also tweet me at Shane plays. That's S H A N E P L A Y S. So, um, Again, that's S H A N E P L A Y S. So um, let's go ahead and get moving with the show. Remember, you can also, well, actually, let me get out a couple more notes um, and then we'll get moving with the show. We've got uh, the show notes for today's show and any show are always up at shameplays.com. That's S H A N E P L A Y S dot com. So as we are, so as we are going uh, and I'm doing news items or if I'm doing, um, you know, talking to the guests or whatever, and you want to know more, hey, what were they talking about? Go to shameplays.com. I got you covered. All the notes for today's show and links and all that are right there. Uh, and don't forget, we do go out as a podcast a couple of days after the show. It'll be posted to the shameplays.com blog. It'll go on iTunes, Stitcher, on YouTube. Uh, we do have a YouTube channel at uh, youtube.com slash go shameplays. So don't forget about all that stuff. Now, I've got, uh, we're, we're going to be talking here in a moment. Um, to Rohit Sodia from Gamers Plane, which is a really cool website that lets people hook up and um, has a lot of tools to allow people to enjoy and play role playing games. Before we talk to Rohit, I've got Stephanie Straw from uh, Game Goblins. Our our sponsor is is on the phone right now, and uh, she's going to tell us about there's a, there's a a a four year birthday party for Game Goblins. That's going on today in West Little Rock. So, Stephanie, welcome back to the show. Hey, hi. Uh, long time listener, first time caller. Uh, not long time, but I've been on the show. <laughs> you've been on the once. show, <laughs> darn it all. Yeah, you've been on the show. <laughs> Stephanie, what's going on? So, I am at Game Goblins uh, celebrating their fourth birthday party. Cool. And we have so much going on. Actually, I had to move into the office because we were just doing raffle prizes um, for coming into the door, Game Goblins, today. Uh, all day, you're going to get a raffle ticket, um, and you'll get an extra ticket for making purchases, an extra ticket for winning games in the store, and we're giving away prizes every hour. So, cool. um, one of them is Pandemic Legacy, which I think we talked about on the show. We did. I was on yeah. It. <laughs> That's the episode. <laughs> It's like an episodic seasonal version of Pandemic, yes. which is very fun. 12, 12 to 24 games of Pandemic, um, and it's a $60 MSRP, so you'll get that for free just for showing up, possibly. Um, we also have 40% off MSRP on all of our clearance items, so that's everything with an orange sticker. We're doing a double loyalty stamp, so anytime you make a purchase over $35, we stamp your loyalty card. After 10 purchases, you get the average of everything you've spent uh, off of your next purchase. So if you've spent 10 times you've come in and spent $100, you get a $100 coupon. So Wow. Um, okay. Yeah. We have a board game swap. So people are bringing in their, um, old games or just games in shrink that they've never played. Um, and they're selling those and uh, they get store credit. So we basically just help you sell your games if you have games you can't get rid of. And nice. um, Calliope Games has sent us Giant Suro. Uh, so it's like life size Zero where you play as the pawn. So that's kind of an abstract strategy tile. So it's a life size game, like you're actually yeah. 
in the game, yeah. kind of. Oh, that's yeah, neat. You, you right. are in the game. There's no, like, fighting IRL or anything. <laughs> uh, no, 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 okay. Well, that's somewhat disappointing, but also encouraging. So, all right. Well, I'll tell you what. Tell us where we can find Game Goblins today where all this fun is going on. Yes, yeah, so we are at the corner of Bowman and Canis um, in that shopping center next to Tropical Smoothie and Singer Tequila. Right there in the corner, look for the big green goblin. Um, and we have three suites over 6,000 square feet. And nice. uh, we are going to be celebrating all day today. And what time does that go till, Stephanie? Um, we close at midnight. All right. So, so we, the, we keep it, we keep, we kick it late night. <laughs> so you're, you're, the party's going to be rocking. Don't bother knocking. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> Game Goblins at, at Canis and Bowman today, fourth birthday party until midnight tonight. Uh, Stephanie, I, I, I appreciate uh, y'all's friendship and sponsorship. It's great store. Great, great uh, ambassador for the friendly local game store. Uh, tell Josh, you know, hope everything goes well. Thanks, thanks very much. And I, I'm, I'm going to try to swing by after the show and say hi to everybody. Absolutely. We love you too. So. Oh, well, thanks, Stephanie. Aw, I'm <laughs> blushing now. Okay. Well, we'll catch you later, and I'm going to have you guys back on the show again to talk, you know, what's hot in games and all that. So. All right. I can't wait. Cool. All right. We'll talk to you later. Thanks so much. Thanks. All right. Bye. And now, folks, that was, don't forget, that was, uh, that was Game Goblins, show sponsor Game Goblins. Uh, they're having a fourth birthday party today until midnight at Bowman and Canis over in West Little Rock. Go check them out. They're having all kinds of cool stuff going on. Uh, and if you're not, if you've never been into a game store, they won't bite. Get on over there and check them out. Now I've got on the phone. Uh, I have Rohit Sodia from Gamers Plane. Rohit, are you with me? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Well, we tried to do Skype, and for some reason, even though we've had success, successful Skype connections before, the Gremlins uh, were uh, were hitting <laughs> us today. So I appreciate you being flexible and calling in, man. I'm, I'm glad to have you on. Welcome to the show. We've been talking on. Twitter back and forth for several months, uh, and I've, I've been kind of, yeah, I've been watching you build your service and the passion and excitement you put into it. We're going to talk more about what Gamers Plane is here in a little bit. It's, it's, a, it's an online community and website for role-playing game uh, gamers, but first, I'm, I'm going to let you cruise along with me on the news segment if you're cool with that. Absolutely. All right, well, let's do this. So, all right, uh, GL. Producer extraordinaire and Zach's in there hanging out too. Let's turn on the uh, hidden mic and listen to the news team in there, buddy. Oh, there they go. Rohit, I, I suspect you work on Saturdays like my news team does. I, I work every day of the week. Yeah, you're constantly working on gamers playing. So I, I see your updates. So uh, folks, don't forget uh, every every dollar of support we get on uh, Patreon is a penny an hour raise that a news service gets. So uh, this is this show is supported by both sponsors, who I'm very pleased to have and honored to have, but also by the community. So uh, you know, if you, if you like what you hear, please consider supporting us via Patreon, and those links are on the website. You can go to Patreon.com/shameplays. Okay, so first in the news, uh, I, I purposefully put two or three role playing game news items in here for you, Rohit. Have you seen these 120 sided dice that have come out from the Dice Lab? I did, and I wasn't sure if it was a joke or not. No, it's real. Yeah, it's real. Uh, there's a, if people go to shameplays.com, there's a link there. They can just search for D120 from the Dice Lab on YouTube or whatever. And what they did is they've actually created a, a 120-sided dice that is, it has a very carefully calculated mathematical, uh, I guess algor- algorithm is not the quite word, but a, 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 you know, they ran it through the math. They, they, had, they brought a mathematician in and they determined that this is the most mathematically accurate uh, dice with the highest number that you can possibly create and with the amount of facets that are involved. So according to them, 120 is it. Yeah, beyond that, it doesn't quite work. This is the most. This is the largest number you can have on a dice and still be mathematically accurate and fair in how it rolls. So, uh, I so this begs the question: Why? It's it's neat from a, a mental exercise point of view, or to see if you can make it, like climb the mountain if it's there. But when when in a role playing game have you ever needed to roll a d one twenty? I've never seen it, and I'm hoping this means that there's a game coming out. Yeah, the one the D120 system. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So, uh, you know, that doesn't mean you know. Up till now, we've had a lot of charts like random encounter tables or treasure tables that were based on the on rolling a percentile dice up to a hundred. 
because that, you know, everyone's used percentile dice forever. But I, I guess now maybe, you know, we could have encounter tables and treasure tables that go up to 120. I, I don't know. So it, I, I, it's neat from I'd like to have one to collect it as a role playing gamer. And I like dice, but I, I can't think of a practical use for this. But it is neat. And if I ever have an extra 12 bucks, I think they're 12 bucks each. So if I ever have an extra 12 bucks, I'll pick one up. So would, Agreed. would you buy you would buy one? I would pick one up for the novelty of it. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. So anyway, but if people are interested in that, go check out the uh, go check out the video. It's really well done. I'm impressed with the amount of thought they put into it. I just can't think of a practical application for it. But gamers being gamers, somebody will find an application for this thing. So uh, <laughs> next next thing, um, I, I don't know if you keep up or uh, how how familiar are you you know with with gaming history, but West End Games used to be a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they've just been bought by the guy who founded White Wolf. Did you know that? Yes, I heard about that recently. Yeah, do you have any, uh, on, on Gamers Plane, do you have any of the old West End Games D6 systems or any of White Wolf stuff? I know you have several no. se several systems you work on. Yeah, I don't think I have anything from West End. White Wolf, we do have uh, Vampires Masquerade, I believe. Right. And... I, I, it's not directly. I know people are playing uh, vampire and werewolf games on the site. Are they? Okay. So, and then we'll get more into what, what, what your site does after the news segment, but it lets people hook up and play games. Um, and, and you have several systems. And, and from what I can tell, you know, you, you do a lot of, uh, it, it's not just a straight play by post game because I, I, I read stuff where you're struggling with, um, you know, how do I implement this, system for this game in a programming manner. So I'm, I'm curious yeah. to curious to learn more about what you bring to the table. I purposefully did not go in and go real deep with it because I wanted to be fresh when I talked to you and, and maybe ask some questions that a user would, or a listener would want to ask as well. So, but awesome. after we talk, I'm going to create an account and go in there and, and go a little bit deeper. So, um, now, um, so anyway, uh, yeah, the guy is Stuart week or Wyke. I'm not sure. I'm going to say week. He founded White Wolf, which for quite a while was a major game company and role playing game, especially in the '90s. You know, they had Vampire and they had Werewolf and they had Wraith and they had all these different uh, really popular Gothic punk sort of atmosphere games. Um, and his brother is actually the guy that does uh, Drive Through RPG. I didn't know that, but when I was reading this article, uh, Stuart, we the guy who founded White Wolf, his brother it, it does drive through RPG and RPG Now and all those, which are you know, and now the Dungeon Masters Guild is powered by that technology. So that's you know, I, I didn't realize the two brothers that were that deep in the role playing game um, industry. So and, and and interestingly enough, if you read the article, it's linked at, at shameplays dot com, and I got the original article from Ian World. Uh, so shout out to Morris there. Uh, they're not actually the first game they're doing from West End Games is not actually a role playing game. It's a uh, oh what is it going to be? Uh, uh, da, 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 it's like a space game or something like that. Yeah, the next Nocturnal Media project on Kickstarter will be a new edition of West End Games great Greg Costikin's Web and Starship. This asymmetrical game was built from the ground up for three players. So I don't. They're not actually kicking off with a. With a role playing game, so I guess West End Games uh, properties is a lot more than just tabletop role playing. Sounds like they have like some board and strategy games in the mix too. So yeah, it sounds really cool. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to learning seeing more. I I love that you know we're definitely in a in a in a board game and role playing game renaissance right now. So there's so much cool stuff going on. You know, people putting really neat stuff out there. The only downside is I have no there's no way I can play all of it and keep up with all of it. So <laughs> yeah, so. All right, so uh, and this is also uh, good news. This is also from Ian World. Uh, the Villains and Vigilantes legal dispute appears to be settled. Uh, and this was, you know, I've actually had Jeff D. and Jack Herman from Monkey House Games on the show twice, and I've stayed in touch with them. And they're probably, we're either going to do another show with them or I'm going to do a special podcast. And I did reach out to them yesterday when I heard this news, and they said, you know, we're working on an official announcement. So they haven't said anything officially yet, but if you look at products from Villains Vigilantes that are on RPG Now, uh, there's a there's a legal statement on there. With the, they took some stuff down and then put it back up, and there's a new statement on there that makes it appear that the legal settlement has been taken care of. 
So we're glad for that. I'm a big Villains of Vigilantes fan from way back, uh, and they're working on on version three. So um, you know, I'm looking forward to see what's happening in that. So, are, are you familiar? Do you do you get much into any superhero role playing games or anything? Rohit, is that is that even? A, uh, I personally love them. Yeah. I they haven't. We just got our first one of master. Was it uh, something? M- M- and Mut- yeah, or? mutants and masterminds. Mutants and yeah. masterminds. Yeah, yeah. That, which I personally have never played. Two weeks ago. Yeah, well, I personally have never played it, but I know that a lot of people like it. So there, there's it another really popular. It is very popular. I'd like to check it out one of these days. Um, and then also uh, there's a there's a game called Bash, the basic action superhero role playing game. I think from Greg Rutkowski, I think is his name. And I kicks I did some Kickstarter stuff with that a few years ago, and that's a fun game. And you know, I'd like to play more of that. So, but I'm totally looking forward to Villains of Vigilantes because that's a major part of my role playing history <laughs> from back in the day. So, and if you ever get a chance to talk to Jeff D and Jack Herman, they're really super cool guys. So, um, okay, are are you a are you a, a computer guy at all? Retro gaming guy at all? Real hit? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So, uh, do you have any love in your heart for the Commodore sixty four? All right, if you're talking about the kicks of the remake that someone's uh, looking into, I am super excited about yeah, that. Yeah, this is there's a Kickstarter that I think we're talking about the same thing here and I got this news item from PC Gamer, you can go to shameplays.com and learn more. Uh, but there's a Kickstarter out there to build a new uh, basically modern version of the Commodore 64 and they're calling it just the 64 because they don't have the rights, I'm sure, to the Commodore name. But it, it looks like a Commodore 64, but it, it's it's got updated guts, and I think it's going to come with games built into it. And, and but it's going to have like modern like HDMI ports and USB ports and stuff like that. And then there's also a a portable handheld version that kind of looks like a tragic mix of the Commodore 64 and the Game Boy. So and it's going to have games built in on it. So, are you, so is this the same thing you're talking about with it? Is that with the, you yeah. mentioned? Okay. I, uh, you know, but the thing is like the base level to get in on this is like 150 bucks and, you know, I'd love to have one, but I don't think I can throw $150 at them right now. I'd love to have one though. Uh, and, and the other thing that's interesting to me on this is they're saying they're only trying to raise $150,000. I don't see how you can produce something like this for just $150,000. So it's it is an interesting thing because I'm I'm definitely a big techie and yeah. I I think I know what plan they're going to go down. It's possible, but uh, yeah, we're going to have to see if it's fiscally yeah. viable. Well, yeah, I mean, one hundred fifty thousand dollars in when you're putting out a product, that's not a lot of money. I mean, because they've got to no. make they've got to make the um, the case. They got to put the guts in it. They've got to do the engineering. I mean. I yeah, I don't know. Maybe they figured out. I guess they figured out that one hundred and fifty dollars is what it costs to make one of these. So that's why if Probably. you if you kickstart at the one hundred and fifty dollar level is where you get one. I I don't know. I'd love to have one of these, but uh, and I'm also kind of getting to where I'm collecting old technology. Like I've got an Amiga uh, two thousand, Amiga five hundred. I've got an old Apple two E. Uh, so I'm starting to try to collect this stuff. So I'd like to get an original Commodore sixty four as well. So, do you keep up with uh, Rohit? Do you keep up with Lazy Game Reviews on YouTube? Not so much. No. That guy. If you like, if you like uh, classic tech, like if you're a techie and you like retro tech, that's the man to follow. He's he's really, really, really knows his stuff and puts out some cool stuff. So, all right, and here's the final news item, and then we'll we'll move over to talk about gamers playing. Uh, Batman: The Killing Joke, the animated movie, has received an R rating. So this yep. is the first. Now we we knew that um, the home version of Batman versus Superman, the Blu-ray was going to have an R-rated extended cut, and and I've heard Zach don't 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 freak out on me. Okay, Zach Zach's one of my producers. He's in there. He's going to lose his mind. I heard that might be coming to theaters. All right, so just simmer. It's okay. GL, give him a little CPR there. He's flopping around on the floor. So it's okay, but it might happen. Now it's a rumor, but evidently because after Batman versus Superman came out, the first weekend it went nuts. The next weekend it dropped like 81%. So I've heard that they're thinking about putting out the R-rated version of theaters to try to get some people back into the theaters. I don't know. 
We'll see. But this is the first animated DC original movie to receive an R rating. And they're going to, and the reason they're doing that is because they're trying to be true to the original graphic novel from the eighties that Alan Moore wrote, which tells a possible origin of the Joker, which most people have, have, have accepted as the origin of the Joker. What do you think about that GL? You going to watch that? Um, yes, I am going to watch it, but I was trying to see uh, on the Dark Knight uh, one and two animated movie that wasn't rated R. No, it's PG thirteen. Wow. Yeah, this is the first R rated animated. You remember the fighting scene in yeah. there with the Joker? It was pretty yeah. intense. Yeah, this is rough. Yeah, I'm oh, okay. surprised that wasn't R. They probably wanted to make it R, okay. but now that they've seen Deadpool and they're going to do an R rated uh, version of Batman v Superman, they're probably getting a little bit more. Hey, we'll we'll do this with the Killing okay. Joke. So. Are, are you going to check that out, Rohit? Are you are you into comics and comic book movies and I, animation? Especially the Killing Joke. That is that was that is probably one of my favorite uh, Batman graphic novels. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. So, uh, and if you and if people have never seen it, I'm not going to say anything else about it. But I've always wondered if the Killing Joke talks about the last few panels because they act. There's actually mm-hmm. a joke involved. I don't know. But anyway, all right, we're going we're going to cut the news segment. Uh, Ro, here, here's what I want to do. I want to, I want to let you um, introduce Gamers Plane, what it is. Then we're going to hit a break, and, and when we come back, we'll, we'll go more into it. But tell us real quick, what, what is Gamers Plane? Sure. So Gamers Plane is an uh, online play-by-post RPG community. Uh, the idea is a place where people who might not have enough time or might not have enough RPG in their life can go online and play games via basically an online forum that was specifically designed for RPG games with a whole variety of tools and functionality and community that is dedicated to RPGs. Okay, and so this is, when we say RPGs, we're talking about tabletop role-playing games. We're not talking about like Baldur's Gate and stuff like, okay. Uh, So tabletop role-playing games, uh, and it's, so it's not, it's not, like play by post and it's not just I'm making uh, comments in a forum explaining what I'm doing. I mean, there's, it's like a forum, like a traditional forums, but with extra tools on it. Am I understanding that right? Yeah. It's, it, so, I mean, I, I look at it as communal storytelling with all the tools built in to do that. So I've got dice rollers built into the site, a whole variety of them. I've got a card deck system if you're looking at some of the Savage World systems that use cards, um, you know, I've got character sheets built in straight onto the site. So the idea is to basically create as minimum resistance for someone to come in and start playing role-playing games right off the get-go without needing to go to any other location. Interesting. Okay. And again, we're talking about tabletop role-playing games. Uh, But to differentiate, this is not a virtual tabletop. Right. Correct. Okay. Cause like, you know, some people might be thinking, oh, this is like roll 20 or fantasy grounds, but that's not what we're talking right. about. Okay. Yeah. This is more passive, more, less time consuming. Okay. So it's, it's, it's interesting. Okay. I'd like to learn more, which we're going to after the break. So when we come back, we're going to be talking more, uh, with Rohit, um, and his, his, uh, website that is much more than that. It's a, it's a, very advanced uh, set of tools and forums that allow people to uh, play role-playing games. And it's got a lot of stuff built in to help make that happen. When we come back on Shame Plays Radio, take us to a break, GL. Hold on to your butt. June 11th to 12th at the Statehouse Convention Center in Little Rock, the River City Comic Expo is Arkansas's largest comic, toy, game, cosplay convention and now features the Little Rock Picture Show. Guests for 2016 include Neil Adams, Mike Zeck, James Silver, Larry Hama, Michael Golden, and Arkansas's own Mitch and Elizabeth Brettreiser, John Lucas, and Dusty Higgins. You'll find booth after booth with artists and dealers representing comics, toys, books, movies, games, and so much more. So come on out to the River City Comic Expo June 11th and 12th at the Statehouse Convention Center in Little Rock, RiverCityComicExpo.com. Fairly alarmed here. MegaWars.net. The classic online space strategy game has returned. Bigger and better than ever before. Scout the universe and claim your empire. Construct, customize, and launch dozens of different starships. Battle thousands of opponents online in a team-based competition, leading to the ultimate battle of the galaxy. Grab your slot today in one of the most hotly anticipated indie games of 2015. 
Visit Megawars.net and get options only available during our pre-sale event running now. Megawars.net The die is cast. Plunge into worlds of fantastic adventure where dragons lie. And the undead stalk the shades of your mind's imagines. Where creatures of legend plunder wealth through the horror of their passage. Monsters grim and foul hold the ecstasy of gold and the renown of glory. All this and more awaits you and your friends in the unlimited, fantastic world of the Castles and Crusades role-playing game from Troll Lord Games. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy today. A rules-light, adaptable game that has stood the test of time. 12 years in constant publication with no new additions, Castles and Crusades is the original easy-to-play attribute check system. Join us and unleash your imagination. Visit your friendly local game store or trollord.com to get your copy of castles and crusades today comic book lovers michael tierney's local comic book stores meet all of your comic book needs with friendly service visit the comic book store on treasure hill road in little rock or collector's edition on jfk boulevard in north little rock and don't forget to click on over to the wildstars.com website I personally have been a customer of Michael's since the mid-80s, and I trust him for my reserve list still today. Michael knows comics. In addition to being in business for 34 years, he has written multiple columns for comic magazines, is an Overstreet Price Guide advisor, and publishes his own comic book series, The Wild Stars. Trust me, these stores are run by a comic book lover for comic book lovers. Remember, for all of your comic book needs with friendly service and to get your copies of The Wild Stars, Make sure to visit the comic book store on Treasure Hill Road in Little Rock or Collector's Edition on JFK Boulevard in North Little Rock and visit thewildstars.com to learn more. Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to patreon.com slash Shane Plays. Hey, we're back. Shane Plays Radio Geek Talk Radio, a journey into things we love. I'm your host, Shane Stacks. I'm joined by Rohit from Gamers Plane, which is a really cool website and community for people who like to play tabletop role-playing games. Uh, before we get back into that, just wanted to mention, uh, you probably heard during the break there, uh, from Castles and Crusades and Troll Lord Games, uh, just want to say that they've been very generous, and they've given me a copy of the Castles and Crusades Player's Handbook to give away. So all you have to do to enter to win is go to the Shane Plays Facebook page, and that's linked on shameplays.com. There's also a link on today's show notes that'll take you right to the post. There's a post pinned to the top of the Shane Plays Facebook page. All you have to do is like the post and share the post. That's all you got to do. And you'll automatically be entered. And, and Rohit, that apply. You can go. You can go enter too. So if if you want a copy of the <laughs> Castles and Crusades Players awesome. Handbook, so you're that you're eligible. Um, all right. So getting back to, uh, and I, I want to thank Troll Lord Games for for uh, supplying that. Really appreciate that. Love working with those guys. You know, they're right here in Little Rock. I don't know if you know that, knew that Rohit, but uh, you know they they've been That's published. Awesome. Yeah, they've been publishing Castles and Crusades for like nine years, eight, nine years, something like that. Uh, and uh, maybe even longer. And they're, they're right here in little rock. So, and, the, and I, I love playing their games. In fact, I'm running a game of it tonight. So, uh, so let's talk a little bit more about gamers playing and that's gamers com, And that's linked on, on the show notes and people can just search for, sh- for gamers playing. Uh, yep. a- and it's, it's a website that, you know, you register, get an account and then you can come in and there's all these, uh, tools, for multiple systems, in fact, let me go to the website here. I had it pulled up a second ago. And let's look yeah. at all these systems that you currently support for tabletop role-playing game. And you're always adding more. So Yeah, uh, it, I think we've got some 30, 32 systems right now. And, uh, you know, I'll stop adding systems when I've hit them all, which right. should be sometime in the next 50, 60 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be like, I finally got them all. And they'll be like, we have a Kickstarter for you. Like, no! <laughs> all right so here's just some examples i'm looking uh and i'm not gonna read them all off but i mean you got 13th age you got call of cthulhu a couple of different versions of call of cthulhu you got dresden files you got multiple versions of dungeons and dragons you got fate um there's three pages of them here you got fate accelerated fate core you got gurps uh, you got marvel universe you got numenera pathfinder 
uh, Savage Worlds, multiple versions of Shadowrun, uh, World of Darkness. Yeah, we were talking about the, the One Ring, which I hear is very good. Star Wars Edge Great of the game. Empire. Yeah, Spycraft. So the point is, and then you got custom, where I guess people can do, a, a, like, bring in a system that maybe isn't yeah, already. If I, if I don't have it yet, you know, I don't want someone to, go, to not play it, and so they can create a custom game. And whenever a custom game gets created, the first thought in my head is, all right, time to start developing this system now. Right. So th- let's just use, since they're a sponsor, let's just use these people for an example. Let's say uh, uh, you decided, hey, I want to add Castles and Crusades to sure. gamers. Play. What, what all is involved with that from your end on a technical perspective? So from the tech side, basically every time I develop a system, I will go through the process of first learning the game itself. Uh, I want to do justice to any game that goes up on the site, of course. Right. And then I end up building the character sheet in a digital format. So basically what I try to do is the same exact character sheet you would use in a live game, I build digitally. And it takes a little bit of time depending on the complexity of the sheet, if there's another game that's similar or I've done something in the past. But I basically end up rebuilding the entire system digitally. I look into dice mechanics, card mechanics, anything that might be special that the game needs to run all of that kind of stuff, and I build a new core on the site. And that ends up being basically the key component towards building the, uh, the character sheet digitally as well as if there are any special tools that are needed to play that game. Okay, so what, what, what is the site? or what? Because I know you have the website technology, but then you've got some other stuff that are making all the, the, uh, the, the functions and stuff work. What, what is this developed in to, like, gaming, like technology from a programming technology, if you don't mind me asking. Oh, from a, yeah, sure. It's, um, I am actually a professional PHP developer. I've been working in PHP for the last two, 10, 12 years, something like that. Okay. Um, and so right now the site is written in PHP, although, uh, the site actually came together because I, I was originally testing out new different ways to build websites, stuff on the side professionally. Okay. And I realized, like, all right, people like tech, and I like RPGs, so I tried to put it together. And so basically, anytime I find cool new technologies that I think will improve the site, they end up getting thrown on there in one way or another. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so let's talk a little bit more about that. How did you... Uh, other than other than saying, "Hey, I want to play with cool technology, cool new technology," there had to be a reason why you wanted the site to have the purpose that it does. So, how did, how sure. did you? I mean, how did that happen? I mean, I'm assuming that you like to play role playing games. Absolutely, been, yeah. Been playing uh, role playing games since high school. Um, I've loved it, uh, and unfortunately for me, I when I went to college, my real life group, uh, you know, we basically stopped playing as much, and then eventually at all. Right, and which I happens to a lot of people. A, that happens to a yeah, lot of people. Especially yeah. in college. Yeah, real life happens. And I didn't find a group in college that I liked. Um, and Kiwi, I had one experience that was absolutely horrible. Uh, and so I went online to try to find stuff. This was before the days of Roll20 and back when VoIP was still right. kind of a dream. And what ended up happening is I tried another play-by-post site. It was okay, but it was kind of dull and boring and didn't really do anything. Uh, now, mind you, this was a decade or so ago. Right. Um, I And so I started building Gamers Plane, and my first iteration failed horribly. So I tried again, and that iteration failed horribly. And <laughs> I probably tried two or three other times, and finally, two years ago, I kind of decided, all right, you know, I'm going to give it one last shot. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, maybe that's a sign that I should not be building this anymore. Right. And thankfully, I don't know what I did differently. I don't know why people liked it this time, but people seem to have liked Gamers Plane, and it's been growing steadily for the last two years. Well, it might have just been the right time for it. You know, what you've been Probably. doing, what you were doing earlier may not. Have, and if you heard me chuckle, I'm not glad that your first two 
iterations failed. You were just oh, so matter of course. fact about it. You're like, they failed horribly and I moved on. So I, it, it always kills me when people come up with all, well, it failed, but you were just like, nope, it failed. Move on. You know? So, uh, like a true developer, you know, like that didn't work. We're going to move to the next, we're going to try something else. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so you, you, you're running it in PHP. Uh, and I, 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 I'm a web developer and, uh, you know, a bit, a bit of a PHP programmer, but I'm more of a front end okay. developer. So, uh, what yeah. is it running on? Have you found that MySQL is robust enough to keep up or uh, what? no. So from the tech end, it is actually, I'm moving to, if you want the full stack, it's moving to an angular front end. So as a front end dev, you might like that. Okay. Um, and it actually runs, so it runs MySQL right now and it's moving to Mongo. Okay. Which is, uh, yeah, which has been awesome. It sped up the site. Incredibly. Has it? Yeah, because I haven't used Mongo, but I, I know that some people, you know, I, I deal a lot in like Drupal and WordPress and stuff like that. And you, so when you get into that technology stack, a lot of times people will say, you know, MySQL or MySQL doesn't scale up as well as the framework that's sitting on top of it. So I was just curious. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, it's been an interesting process of growth and development on that. So is it, uh, how, how many, and if you don't want to share this, that's fine. Uh, but I'm curious, can you, can you give us a rough idea of like how many people are using it? Like when you say now there's people sure. using it, there has to be some amount of people that you feel is a success worth putting the time into it. Well, I mean, for me, the success would have been one, like one group is consistently using it. That, that was my baseline. But right now, so we get about 600 hits a day, and I believe about 200 or so of them are unique. Okay, how many How many hits? You said 200? 200 or so unique hits a day. Okay, yeah. okay, that's pretty That's pretty steady. So, and, and that's grown, because so, before you yeah. couldn't, yeah, you couldn't retain. If you're getting un, uh, a high percentage of unique, that's good. You know, because that means it's not just the same people over and over. So Absolutely. how many like and what percentage again, you know, I, I don't want to get too deep into your into your actual <laughs> numbers, but what percentage converts into people who you think are actually using the site as like, hey, I'm, I'm going to run a game here now that I've come along and, and seen the site. Uh, I So my retention rate, if I remember, is is pretty good. Uh, something around the 60, 70 percent. Yeah, that area. is good. That's actually good. But yeah, I think it is also because if you have an, it, it's largely a word by uh, uh, yeah, something by mouth. What? Yeah, word of uh, mouth. Yeah, that's. I mean, I'm curious. There we go. <laughs> are you trying to at some point? Or, I mean, are you wanting to build? Is this? Is this a labor of love for you that you're going to do no matter what? Or at some point, are you trying to, you know, make this to where it'll bring in a little bit of money or, you know, kind of what are your plans? In both ways, it is 100% a labor of love, regardless of whether it's making money or not. There's at no point will the profit of this site overrule, uh, you know, better judgment. Right. Uh, but, you know, if I can make money right now, I think my backlog given the amount of time I have to work on the site is on the order of years. <laughs> if, I, if the site was making money, I could probably afford to either leave my job or you know, right. figure some out, something else out and put more time into the site and build it into something much more amazing than it currently is. So do you think so that, it, it's a balancing act? So have you thought about, I mean, obviously you could run ads, but have you thought about doing like a freemium, like, you know, where basic services are free and then maybe charge for more. I mean, like what, if you ever took it sure. to where you're like, Hey, I'm trying to make some money off this. Have, have, you know, have you thought about which way you'd want to go with that? Yeah. So I don't think I'd ever want to charge for services per se. If I were to do something, I'd probably want to follow something along the roll 20 line of things or the, uh, you know, uh, and you guys, you had these guys on the site a couple of weeks back and I can't remember, uh, the virtual tabletop. Ooh, yeah, that was fantasy. That was fantasy grounds. Fantasy yeah. grounds. Uh -huh. There we go. Yeah. Uh, just, just how for them getting extra modules, you pay for stuff. If I could ever work out contracts with the big uh, game companies, similarly have stuff on Gamers Plane that you know, here is some extra stuff that you can have for money. All right. So, and that that kind of that kind of uh, brings up another point. Is there? 
I mean, I, I guess at the level of what you're doing now, you're just, I mean, there's nobody, they can't come along and saying, hey, you're using our system and you have to have an official relationship with us or anything like that. Um, you know, so yeah, to go around, oh, um, go around is not the right word, but basically yeah. th- what I'm doing is I'm hosting character sheets, I'm hosting dice, and I'm hosting cards along with a forum. There's no proprietary information up on the site. When you play a game, you either need your own books or you need an SRD okay. or something else. So Gainers Plane is a service which lets you play the games that you'd already be playing right. but might not have the opportunity to play. Whereas, in, in, in contrast, it, in Roll20 or in uh, Fantasy Grounds, then uh, you know there's actual like rules information in there right. like that you're using the uh, the ip or the or the rules or whatever of the, of the actual game in some of those modules so here's what we're gonna, do. We're gonna take another break when we come back i want to i want to learn more about a what are the most popular systems uh and then and then b what would it be like like give us some ideas of, of like some of the tools that you bring to the table like sure. rolling dice or this or that and give people a better idea of what of what advantages there will be to, to using your website um i'm gonna real quick we mentioned game goblins earlier i'm gonna throw them some love people remember they're having their fourth birthday party today over at bowman and canis some goblins are your friends game goblins is central arkansas's premier retailer of magic the gathering warhammer 40k board games card games rpgs miniatures and hobby accessories call game goblins at 501-224-GAME or visit them online at gamegoblins.com they are conveniently located 1121 South Bowman, right on the corner of Bowman and Canis in West Little Rock, and staffed by friendly employees. For all of your gaming needs, I hardly recommend Game Goblins. Make sure to check out their customer loyalty program that rewards you based on your actual purchases. And Stephanie talked about that earlier when she called in. Game Goblins earns your business and keeps it. First time customers mention Shane Plays and receive $10 off your purchase of $50 or more. Call Game Goblins at 501 224 Game or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. Remember, they're having their fourth thir- birthday party till midnight tonight. So go check them out. Tell them Shane Plays sent you. Comic book lovers, Michael Tierney's local comic book stores meet all of your comic book needs with friendly service. Visit the comic book store on Treasure Hill Road in Little Rock or Collector's Edition on JFK Boulevard in North Little Rock. And don't forget to click on over to the wildstars.com website. I personally have been a customer of Michael's since the mid 80s and I trust him for my reserve list still today. Michael knows comics. In addition to being in business for 34 years, he has written multiple columns for comic magazines, is an Overstreet Price Guide advisor, and publishes his own comic book series, The Wild Stars. Trust me, these stores are run by a comic book lover for comic book lovers. Remember, for all of your comic book needs with friendly service and to get your copies of The Wild Stars, make sure to visit the comic book store on Treasure Hill Road in Little Rock or Collector's Edition on JFK Boulevard in North Little Rock and visit thewildstars.com to learn more. Privately owned and licensed by the Arkansas State Police, Rock City Alarm Company has been in business since 1996, specializing in sales, installation, servicing, and monitoring of burglar alarms and fire alarms for the state of Arkansas. Rock City Alarm provides service for residential and commercial alarms and now provides cellular monitoring with remote arm and disarm. Just call John Hardiman at 501-541-8747. That's John Hardiman at 501-541-8747. Right now, for a limited time, Chapman Services is offering 0% financing till 2021 or up to $1,000 trade-in on your old heating and air conditioning system. Imagine the money you will save every month. Call today. Chapman Service. All you want in a heating and air conditioning company and nothing you don't. Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as one dollar an episode simply go to patreon.com slash shane plays welcome back to shane plays radio uh, i'm shane stacks your host this is a journey into the things we love i've got i'm talking to rohit from gamers plane and uh, we're going to talk about that here in a second i want to i want to remind everybody that uh, this is interactive uh people can tweet me at shane plays s-h-a-n-e-p-l-a-y-s or they can call it 501-823-0965 if you so choose so back to rohit and gamers playing uh so i'm curious uh rohit what is uh, i'm assuming it's going to be D just because they're either that or pathfinder 
because they're the the big the big people in the room. But what what are the most popular systems that you're seeing played on gamers playing? Yeah, right now it's definitely fifth edition or Numenera. Actually, really, Numenera that's Spain good. Good for Monty getting... Cook Games. All right, good for them. So yeah, you... they're definitely the two big names in the boat right now. Wow, that that surprises me because I I like the Cipher system and I like Numenera. But uh, I'm surprised to hear that to hear that they have that much share. I'm glad because I think they're doing really cool stuff. And in fact, uh, two or three weeks from now, I'm having Shauna Germain on to talk about that. No, thank you, evil uh, RPG that they made for kids. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that or oh, not. Oh, I yeah, I'm really looking forward to like getting to try that game. Yeah, so we're gonna have Shauna. She's been on the show before, and and I really like Monty Cook games. So, um, all right, so that that's interesting. Um, now what, what is the, like the system that's not on the site right now that you get the most requests for? Uh, there's a lot there. I think I've got a backlog of like 10 or 12 games right now. Um, so a couple of people are playing Feng Shui too, and I know that, uh, they would like to get it. I don't want to call it officially supported because it's not like I'm doing all that much, but they would like to see it on the site. Right. And uh, I definitely know that, like we said, mutants and masterminds is something people are, people are playing and they'd like to also see up. Right. Well now in that does not, I, and I could be wrong here, but does not savage worlds also have like a mutants and masterminds source book. I'm not sure. I, I thought actually they never did. heard of mutants and masterminds until someone decided that to play it. Oh, okay. Well, I, for some reason, I could be wrong on that because you already have Savage Worlds on there, correct? Yes. Okay. Which is, I've never played, but I know it's got a pretty big fan base. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So, and I'm, I'm just now, after all these years of being in RPGs, I'm just now getting into GURPS. Uh, and I've heard people say that, you know, Savage Worlds and GURPS are kind of similar, you know, is that they're multi genre kind of thing. So, yes. Yep. Well, that's Definitely cool. True. So, uh, so mutants and Ma- so it sounds like mutants and masterminds will be the next official release that we see happening. Is that the one that you're actively working on at the moment? Um, maybe. So I actually got a little bit lucky because the guy, uh, the people over at um, John Wick Presents, uh, who just did the uh, Seven Seas Kickstarter, right? Uh, so Seven Seas version two or Seven Seas second edition is going to be out, right? And what is I got? I missed that one, man, because I've never played Seven Seas, but everybody's like Seven Seas. So, have you played it? I mean, is this game that great? I have not. Okay. It, from everything, I mean, some of some of my favorite uh, some of my favorite podcasters and friends in the world are really looking forward to it, which tells me that I should be looking forward right. to it. Yeah, it's, it's so got good of word of mouth on. or whatever. So, yeah, yeah, fantastic. Uh, but. I'm getting kind of lucky because I contacted them about seeing if I, I wasn't able to back, but I asked them, is it possible for me to get the character sheet ahead of time? And they will be providing me with a copy of the character sheet so that I can have it ready on gamers plane when people get their books. Wow. That's cool. So that, that, that's super cool. So, uh, and that also shows the respect that some of the publishers have for what you're doing. So, um, right, I'm hoping, yeah. I'm hoping that's a sign. Yeah. Good for you. So, okay. Okay. With a few minutes we have left radio, I always tell people that there's two types of time in the world. There's real time and then there's radio time because it goes so <laughs> quick. We've only got a few minutes left. What if I come to gamers playing and I'm like, okay, let's just say I just cause most people know D and D let's say I'm playing D and D. What, what is it that if I go to just any other site and use their forums, what is it that gamers playing brings the table? Like what I know you say character sheets and dice rolling and cards, but I mean, what, what does that actually mean? Like, does it keep track of my hit points? I mean, what, 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 what does it actually mean? Sure. So, you know, I, I always say that the first thing about gamers playing over any other site is the community. I, I'm not going to even pretend to take credit for it, but I, at least I've enabled probably what is the friendliest online community I have yet seen, which is saying a lot for the internet. Um, so you're definitely... It's, you said it's, very, it's a very friendly community? Yes. Okay. Um, so that, I think that's a huge part about doing things online. You don't want to be in a place where you're going to feel uncomfortable or anything like that, uh, especially in RPGs, because it's very easy to, you know, 
not have a GM or group that you particularly like. In addition to that, a lot of other forum sites, you either need to roll dice on your own or you need to trust that the person who's rolling is actually getting the results they say. Uh, in the case of Gamers Plane, there is, whenever you make a post, you have the option of adding dice roll directly on. So the website rolls it, keeps track of it, and stores it. And so all of the dice rolls, you can be assured, are fair in that everyone is using the same system. It's being tracked and maintained. So no one's saying they rolled a 20 when in actuality they critically fumbled. All right. Well, now what on the on the DM or the GM or in the case of Castle Crusade, the Castle Keeper, as a DM, sometimes I have to fudge rolls to save uh, a player's rear. <laughs> so, I mean, right. can the DM still do that? Absolutely. Well, so while it's not, you can't directly fudge, but the nice thing is the DM can also choose to show their dice roll or show that they rolled dice, but not show what the results ah, are. Okay, there we go. Or yeah, so, basically so, hide various parts of it. Okay, that's I need that because sometimes I have to protect the players from themselves <laughs> as, as a DM. Yeah. So yeah, and I'm, I'm that kind of DM myself. I, you know, yeah. I'm more concerned with the story than I am the results. Yeah. So what you accidentally fell into a pit, and you, I know you you survived with one hit point. Yeah, you're okay. Yeah, you're okay. Yeah, and I usually tell I'll tell my players when if I say, look, the dice are purely going to... Like, I had a, a, a second-level player the other day that charged an adult red dragon. I said, I got to let the dice. I can't. There's nothing I can do for you here, man. So, uh, okay, well, you know, we're, we're coming to the end of the show, Rohit. Thanks so much for being on. Uh, remember, it's Thanks gamers... Yeah, yeah, and uh, well, I'll, I'll keep in touch with you. I definitely want to see how this keeps going. Um, it's gamersplane.com, and it's an active role-playing game community and a site that has tools to allow you to play role-playing games to find groups in multiple role-playing systems and play role-playing games. Now, leave anything out there. Uh, no, I'll, I'll just mention that like it's the big thing for if you want to get more role-playing in your life or like a lot of us adults, you're too busy right yeah. now with friends, family. You're here, yeah. You can take 10, 15 minutes a day and still get your RPG fix. All right, cool, man. I got to wrap us. I got 30 seconds. Rohit, thanks so much for coming on. I've really enjoyed talking with you, and I like keeping up with you on Twitter. So, tweet of the week, Corey Doctorow. If you think typos are evidence of moral failure, you need to rethink your moral universe. I don't know what context that was set in, but I just liked the tweet. Next week, we've got In Exile talking torment, tides of Numenera. Rohit, thanks so much for being on, and everyone, thanks for listening to Shame Plays Radio. Shame Plays Radio.